Darvin for everything in that game and, uh, and how incredible it was both ways. Uh, just how about Lonnie Walker in the fourth quarter? He hadn't scored up to that point, hits the three, uh, ends up getting 15 points. Uh, where did you find the trust to bring him back into the lineup, and, and what did you think as you watched that tonight? You know, as I've stated before, um, not only do you have to be on your P's and Q's, you know, dotting your I's, crossing your T's defensively, but another element that you have to do versus this phenomenal Warriors team. I mean, I just told the team in the post-game speech, there's no other team on, on earth that plays the way they play um, and puts you in the like, precarious positions that they do. Um, they play with such speed and east, west, north, south, their, their IQs, I mean, their chemistry, their rhythm, and when they're hitting like they were during, the, especially the second and third quarters, you know, it's daunting. But one of the elements of of trying to, you know, stay close and hopefully come up with the victory is also keeping the scoreboard moving on your side. And, you know, we had an unfortunate loss up there, 27-point deficit, but going into that fourth quarter, you know, you, you kind of start thinking smart, thinking with your head and not your heart. Um, how can you, you know, build up some equity for the following game? And that comes in the form of resting, you know, your heavy minute guys and just, I want to say throwing in the towel, but really just being realistic with yourself about what the outcome is going to be. It's their night, so we look for different ways how we can get better or find something. And um, that was the case. Lonnie came in, played well. And let me just back up and say this, man. The kid is a beautiful kid. You know, he, he fell out of the rotation through no fault of his own. We make the trade. You know, he had an injury. and It's just a lot of different circumstances, and that wasn't his fault. And But he, he, he remained a trooper, remained professional, remained high-spirited, positive, and uh, really kept working on his game, attacking his game every day, really staying locked in on the information, especially during these playoffs up to, up to the point where, you know, he, he, he got he – was, he was able to crack the rotation. And, you know, when, you, when your mind and your heart is in a good place, the body follows. And I've seen a ton of kids play with them, coach them, where, you know, there's nothing but negative because their individual circumstances aren't what they would hope them to be. And then when they do get an opportunity unexpectedly, they fail miserably. And so kudos to him. Shout out to him. You know, he was huge for us tonight. Our team captains talking through coverages, matchups. LeBron in particular, just everybody, the dialogue, you know. We get frustrated because we know we could be doing things better. And the one thing we did, you know, I think it was 6.02 on the clock, fourth quarter, Bron said, come on, man, whatever's done is done. This point forward, let's go be great. Let's be great. And so the guys, they dev all of us, everyone over there heard that message, and they came out, and we had some unfortunate turnovers late. We had some unfortunate – Shots go in on, on their end, um, but we just kept going possession by possession, next play mentality, and stayed as aggressive as we could and try to put ourselves in a position to be successful, and we were able to do that. But Lonnie Walker is right in the middle of all of that. Darvin, I um, wanted to know your thoughts on LeBron's fourth quarter performance in particular. You start the quarter down seven. He orchestrates that 7-0 run. You tried to get him a blow. He might have been on the bench for 10 <laughs> seconds. Right. Um, and then he, he's there to close it out, playing 43 minutes total. Uh, just just how did he help organize you guys, lead you guys down the stretch? I mean, we spent a big chunk of the halftime looking at different clips, our transition defense, our pick-and-roll defense. We talked through matchups. They gave their input. And you have to listen to your players. Like, absolutely. I, I mean, it's... I remember a time in the NBA where it was more of a dictatorship, and, and I've been around and played for some stubborn coaches. <laughs> but uh, I won't say any names, but uh, I work with some stubborn coaches. But um, you got to listen to your players, man. In team sport, things got to be collaborative. Man, whether it's the video room guys, whether it's your assistant coaches, whether it's your players, guys that are looking at the game in an honest and genuine way and trying to give you the best possible route to lead that leads to success and Brian did that as well as went out there and put the team on his back for several possessions and just got it done and then and, and again doing what he's, he always do, does and you know play winning basketball and and you know when Lonnie got it going trying to find Lonnie and then just you know 
everybody's so excited for the kid, but Bron is definitely, you know, he he is who he is for a reason. And, um, you know, tonight that was on full display. Uh, Darvin, uh, we, we've seen the chess match between LeBron and Steph before where LeBron will call up whoever Steph is defending to, to kind of come into the action for pick and roll. Uh, we, we saw that a lot tonight in, in the fourth. Um, what, what did you think of the, the chain reaction of that and, and the way Golden State had to kind of scramble to, to help him and, and the fouls he picked up and, and just how effective that was down the stretch? I think it opens up backside, off-ball lanes, passing lanes, driving lanes because they know, you know, they want to protect Steph. And so if he's involved in that on-ball action, um, whether he's guarding the, the ball handler or the screener, they're going to be on high alert, and they're going to be shifted in um, to try to give support. And, you know, our guys, they just have to be disciplined, and they were to stay spaced and be ready to attack. And um, the only times we really got in trouble, times we just held the ball too long, um, didn't go to the next thing immediately or come running into a, a secondary or third screen. Um, but all in all, you know, we were able to be use that and be really, really effective. Uh, whether it was Brian handling and bringing Steph up guarding the screener, whether it's Brian screening with Steph on the ball, uh, it's just you know the way we had to attack and also play downhill and not settle. Uh, but it, it was great. You know, that's just again figuring out a way as the game go on. You got to figure out a way, figure out a way, and keep marching towards your ultimate goal, which is a W and. Um, you know, we were, we were very fortunate to get this game tonight. No, I've been Austin is another, another one of your role players that plays well for you guys again tonight. Are you more surprised by what he does, or is this just what you expect? And how is he doing physically? I mean, I'm not surprised at all. You know, he was had some misses early. Um, how many turnovers did Austin have tonight? Just two. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's his first time, his first time through, and he's doing a great job battling through the ups and downs, trying to stay aggressive, stay focused, stay locked in, don't, not getting down on himself. And, you know, the whole locker room is supportive of everyone, you know, whether it's Lonnie, whether it's Austin, whether it's Brian, everybody's really on the same page being supportive and, and, and giving positive energy if they see a guy, you know, having some tough moments. But... Um, Austin, I expect him to be fearless as always, and he was. You know, it was times that he didn't have some not so good moments, but him being a trooper, you know, I pulled him over and I told him, stay aggressive, stay aggressive. And I said, a couple of those shots you're catching, a couple of those passes, you got to be ready to shoot. And the very next play, I swear, it, it, the ball came to him and he just threw it up there like it was nothing, second nature, and it went right through the rim. So. He just has to stay fearless, stay aggressive, stay locked in like he's always been. You know, we, he'll, he'll make it through the rough patches of, of different segments of the game. But again, he, he's having a ball in his first playoff run. Hey, Darvin. Uh, you said you've seen guys fail miserably when they've fallen out of the rotation and they have their big moment. Um, did you see signs before tonight that Lonnie would respond the way he did? Absolutely. You know, we talk, and he's always positive, and you see him work. You know what I mean? When other guys may have, you know, we, we have these days we call get what you need days. Well, for him, the low, no minute guys, they go in there and they, we, we have a stay ready group that uh, is orchestrated by one of my assistants in front of the bench coach, Jordan Ott. And a lot of coaches are there just looking at and, and seeing what the approach is. And he goes in there upbeat and he has great days in the stay ready group where they play four on four, five on five, sometimes it's three on three. Um, coaches will jump in with him and, um, he just kept himself together and uh, stayed positive, stayed supporting his teammates. And, again, that, that karma, that good, productive, positive karma, it's real. You know what I mean? Whatever you put out in the world, you know, it's a 360-degree existence that we live in. And whatever you put out goes full circle. It's either go come back and slap you in the face or come back and hug you. And so, you know, the energy he put out, it came back and hugged them and hugged us because he needed, we needed all of that. That was nice. Um, <laughs> a lot of hugging. So, um, when, when you're the all-time leading Appreciate scorer, it. yeah, no problem, Dar. When, when you're the all-time leading scorer in this league, like, you've put teams on your back plenty of times over that, that career. But at this stage for LeBron, now that he doesn't have to, maybe necessarily with this team, how does that allow him to do things like switch on to Steph for huge chunks of the fourth? And, and to, do, you, do you sense in him 
total trust, especially in these playoffs and allowing other guys to, to step forward into the light a little bit? I mean, I just think, you know, he the, the, the type of talent that we were able to surround he and AD with, um, from the guys who are already here, Dennis, Austin, these guys, Lonnie, Troy, um, to the guys we brought in, you know, all the new guys, uh, AD in that mix, you know, uh, Bron and AD, I think they have an opportunity to not have to dictate each and every possession. And uh, we go, we try to to get them the ball as much as possible, but there are times where, as you, you've seen with Austin Reeves, you've seen with Lonnie, you've seen with D'Lo, Dennis, Rui, other guys step up and they start making plays. And these guys, are their eyes are wide open and, and, and they allow themselves to be led, not only coached, but led by the guys, the elder statesmen that are in their locker rooms. And um, those guys in the locker room with them, leading those guys, our two captains, Brian A.D., Who's been through? Who've been through several, several wars. So I just think it's a fact, a matter of fact, of him understanding that now he has a lot of gas left in the tank. Uh, thus, as you saw him coming out the game, then going right back in 15 seconds later. Uh, but he, he, when it's when it's money time, like you know, I've seen it coached against him when he's been in that mode, and you know, it's just it, it, it's it's just special. You know, there's not too many guys, not just in the league, but in the history of the league, that's able to not just perform well individually, but talk their teammates through situations and communicate with the coaches and, and, and get a, put us in the best possible position to be to, to, to be successful. Hey, Darvin, uh, you since you've been in the league as a player and coach, you've seen a lot of the, the great defensive players. I just wondered if you could put AD's postseason so far into context. Uh, and even specifically those last couple of plays, sticking with Steph uh, out in the perimeter and the way that he can dance. Again, his versatility, man. He can defend laterally, vertically. Um, his communication on the back line, his communication up when he has to, again, as you mentioned, switch on to a smaller guard, a superior perimeter threat such as Steph, who can also play downhill and make plays at the rim for his teammates. Um, it's huge. And, 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 you know, he's been locked in on that end. Coming into the season, you know, that's all he talked about was being elite defensively um, and telling me constantly, you know, I, you know, I can read, coach. I can read. I can move my feet. I can read. And so he showed that tonight. And just just to everybody, man, they, they, you know, the team D, the multiple efforts, you know, again, we had a tough second and third quarter defensively. But uh, the first and the fourth, you know, we, we set a good tone defensively. Things got a little shaky, a little shaky coming out of halftime. But then the fourth quarter, when it was time, you know, we stepped up and were able to get shots. I mean, stops. Coach, basically at the trade deadline right in the front, oh, okay. you guys got a brand new team. And that's not easy for a head coach to deal with, getting six new players at one time. But yet now you're one game away from the conference finals. Why has it worked? This is just the buy-in, man. And starting with Brian and AD, at the end of the day, man, I think they sat back and watched the way, you know, we had some tough moments early in the year to start the season and went through several. I mean, I, don't, I can't remember how many different lineups with starting lineups we had. I mean, I think we set a record. It was 37 or 38 last time I checked, somewhere like that. And, but I think the consistency of the coaching staff, the energy that they brought, um, to the gym every day and, and just a mentality to get better and just talking through different things in our film sessions. And then once, you know, we, we flipped the team, so to speak, at the deadline, those guys welcoming those new guys in and, and they become virtual coaches in terms of talking to their teammates and sharing the terminology and sharing how, they, how you know, we want to defend, how we want to play offense and the constant film study. So I just think it's been everybody to buy in, but it starts with, 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 your, with your star players, man. Like, Ron and AD, they've been great for me all year. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, my pride and ego is null and void. Like, I just want to go about doing things the right way. And then, as long as the information is on point that we're getting, no matter if it's a coach to coach, player to coach, 
coach to player, player to player, just long as we're on the same page and we're consistent with our message and what we're trying to do and extract out our defense and our offense, I'm good. Like, like I don't have to have be the one to take the credit. It, it just, and I know those guys in that locker room, they're the same way. We just want to put ourselves in a position to get Ws in. It's going to be a tough one going up north. Um, that game on Wednesday, going to be another dog fight. You can expect another dog fight. That's a prideful team. They're the defending champs for a reason. And so all of us are going to have to make sure we're on the same page and locked in. Darvin, uh, knowing your background, how much you love the defensive end of the floor, you wanted this team to, to hang its hat on that end. Just how much are you enjoying the way this team is, is comporting itself? I just think the relentlessness, man. It brings a smile to my face, makes me feel fuzzy and warm. Just the relentlessness, man. You know, I, I, I happen to be a part of, the, as a player, one of the all-time greatest defenses I think the NBA has ever seen, the 3 4 Pistons, you know, holding people under 70 points for an entire game. Just being around Banshee, Chauncey, Rip, Tayshawn, all, Mike James, Lindsey Hunter, all these guys, Elton Campbell, Corliss, Mimit, like all, all of these guys were, were – totally focus on that end of the floor. We, it wasn't pretty most nights, but we figured out a way. And a lot of it was due to our getting stops and, and coming from Atlanta, Milwaukee, you know, the type of system we had under Coach Bud, it was the same type of deal. Uh, so that's one of the first things I wanted to check the box on, our competitiveness, us being together, and us being accountable. And uh, it all starts on the defensive end. That gives you a chance each and every night. Last one. I'm sure these guys don't need reminders that the fourth one is the hardest one to get, but last series in game five in Memphis, is that something that, that's fresh enough in their minds that maybe it'll serve as a reminder? I mean, I, I just think the, the, <laughs> the monster that we're dealing with in the Golden State Warriors is we don't have to look back to Memphis. and We already know how hard it is to close teams out, so... We just have to go up there, make sure we're all on the same page, make sure we're our competitive spirit. Our competitive spirit is at an all-time high. Our togetherness is at an all-time high. It's going to be a hostile environment. It's, um, I just, I, I'm looking forward to it, but uh, it's definitely going to be a battle. You know, they, we, we just want to go up there and do what we need to do to be the best versions of ourselves. And between now and then, um, fill our cups back up and get ready to go rock and rumble.